What's the most important part of the game for deciding who wins and loses in League? And it's actually something that happens before the game even starts. A lot of people love to type draft diff at the end of the game, but very rarely do people actually put in the effort into drafting a good team comp when champion select is actually happening. When it comes to picking up the right champions, it can be a bit difficult. The champs with super high win rates are obviously pretty busted and are good picks, but it can be a bit tough to know what champions are bad. I mean, some are obvious. Aphelios' win rate is about 45% and there's no argument for ever picking him, unless you just want to have fun. But then there are picks like Silas Jungle. His win rate is negative, but when played correctly, he's insanely busted. So today, I'm hoping that we can clear up which champions are absolutely terrible, so you can avoid picking them at all costs. My name is Nathan Ng, and our topic for today is the worst champs on patch 13.2. We'll be starting things off with Akali. It's important to note that this is specifically referring to Akali top lane. In the mid lane, you can make arguments for her. Despite her low overall win rate, a good Akali player can definitely play into quite a few mid lane matchups, and even in the tougher ones, she can play safely and pick up kills post 6. But in the top lane, things are a lot harder. For one, the tanks, juggernauts, and bruisers up here are a lot beefier, making it hard for any assassin to fight them, especially once they pick up itemization to shut you down. To make matters worse, you don't have the safety of being so close to your turret like you would in the mid lane. Top lane is a lot longer, and once your shroud is down, there's not much that you can do to stop your opponent from running you down in that lane. It's not like you're gonna reach a point where things get any better. Almost all top lane matchups are a losing one for you from levels 1 to 18, so save yourself the trouble. If you have to pick a Kali, take her mid lane. If you refuse to leave top lane, drop her from your pool for now. Before we go any further, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while our meta videos and other content are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24-7, so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your ProGuides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now, let's get on with the list. Our second top laner to avoid is Aatrox. He's been absolutely gutted and for good reason. While his solo queue win rate has never been particularly great, when a good Aatrox got an early lead, he could easily take over the game and solo carry. Just look at Worlds, where he had a 100% pick ban rate. So, after the last round of nerfs, you think it's going to be as bad as it's going to get for him. His win rate on 13.1 is around 47-ish percent, but on 13.2, things are looking a lot worse. The healing on Death's Dance is getting gutted, and the Omni Vamp from Eclipse is being removed. Seeing as those items are Aatrox's core build, he's pretty much going to be an Aphelios tier after this. Taking a look now at the jungle, the first pick that we'll be warning you about to avoid is Zed. Zed has always been overall a pretty low win rate champion, but due to his ability to clear jungle very quickly, he's been pretty popular in the role, especially in high elo. With really good pathing, you could snowball hard and run away with games, but even back then, it wasn't very consistent, and now it's borderline impossible. On top of his last round of nerfs, the current meta is just really bad for Zed. Even if you do get an early lead, it doesn't mean much when you're up against beefy tanks and juggernauts. You'll basically never be able to do much without them being 15 and 0, and even then, I have my doubts. On top of you being weaker on the 1v1 side, those guys are just way, way more useful in team fights, especially when you run into one abusing Radiant Virtue. The other jungler that we need to talk about is Talon. Everything we just said above pretty much applies here. With his parkour allowing him to pressure the map earlier than Zed, you'll run into the same wall later into the game. Even if you get fed early, it's really hard to convert that into much once people start grouping up. At that point, all that map mobility doesn't really mean that much. Next up for the mid lane, we'll be starting out with Lucian. Lucian is by far the biggest bait pick in this game. A lot of people think that this is the go-to pick to counter champions that you want to shut down hard early, like Cassidy. But trust me, if you pick him, you'll regret it more often than not. Yes, Lucian is a very strong lane bully early on, but due to how he has to play the lane, he's almost always shoving, leaving him very open to ganks. As soon as he dies once, all his pressure is gone, and most lane opponents will be able to start farming him. Since Lucian is purely a damage dealer with no utility, once behind, he provides absolutely nothing to a team. The other mid laner that you want to avoid is LeBlanc. At the very best, if you get fed early on LeBlanc and the entire rest of your team is even or ahead, you can have some pop-off games. But that's the best case scenario that doesn't really happen too often. For one, to get a lead on LeBlanc, you're very jungle reliant. With her low wave clear, it's really hard to get a foothold on the game without jungler working to snowball you. She doesn't even have the burst to look for solo kills until you have some items and levels. And even when fed, if the enemy team has a good team fighting comp and starts grouping, you'll find it very difficult to find ways to get onto the squishy backline and do anything in fights. It just takes one CC ability to hit you in a fight to shut you down, and once you take a good chunk of damage, it's even harder to try going in again. Moving things down to the bot lane, the first champion that we have is, well, Aphelios. This is pretty much a given at this point. Aphelios has been so heavily balanced around pro play that if he even starts to show up in games, we're going to see some nerfs. Aphelios is a very hard champion to pull off. First, you need a player that actually understands how to play him. 
Knowing which guns are good in which situations is really important. But what really makes it harder is having a team that understands that. Most solo queue players are just there to play their own game. Say that you fight team fights with a certain gun combo. This means that you not only need your team to wait for you to have that combo, but you also need them to come before that window expires. Remember, you only have so long before you can actually move on to your next gun, unless you're going to stop farming and trading entirely. Picking a second ADC for this patch is actually kind of difficult. Really, nothing compares to how bad Aphilios is. There's Senna, but her pick rate is so low in this role that it doesn't really feel right to use her. There are a few options that you can argue for. Vayne, MF, Sivir, and Kalissa were all candidates. After considering how good they were at varying levels of play, the option that we decided to go for is Sivir. Out of all those champions, she's the one with the lowest ceiling for carrying games. She's got a lot of rough matchups in the current meta, and even when ahead, she isn't a hyper carry like she used to be. She's not just able to throw a team on her back and won't be 5 fights at 3 items. The change in Avori may have worked in her favor, but I don't think it's going to be enough to really make her a worthwhile pick. While some entries are clear cut, some are a lot harder to call. As with any list like this, we have to use some subjectivity. So that being said, if there's anything that you think that we missed, make sure you let us know in the comments below. We love to see what our pro guys family thinks about the game just as much as we love teaching guys about it. Now let's round out the list with our supports. The first champ that we'll be talking about here is Yumi. I mean, statistically, she's never been a good pick in solo queue. Right now, she has under a 45% win rate overall, and personally, I don't mind. I hate this champion. Even in high elo where she's supposed to perform better, it barely goes up by a single percent. So why is she being nerfed at 13.2 if she's bad? Well, let's distinguish something here. There are two main reasons that Yumi is constantly getting nerfs. For one, there's an obvious answer to most questions like this for champion balancing. Yumi is a monster in pro play, just look at what she did at Worlds. She was the second highest presence at the event, with a 95% pick ban rate and a 100% win rate in the 8 games that she got through. The second thing is that despite her low win rate in solo queue, she's still being picked and banned quite a lot. Overall, she's picked 9% of the time and banned 18% of the time, but that ban rate goes up past 30% in upper ranks. Why do people hate her so much? The thing is, even if she's objectively pretty awful, in the games where you do lose to her, it feels awful. By design, there's no real counterplay once a Yumi comes online. She just has to attach to some fed carry, usually a hyper carry or some obnoxious diver like Hecarim, and it becomes very difficult to shut it down. It's just a toxic design, one that really needs the time of a mid-scope update or even a CGU. But for now, Riot's band-aid solution is to keep nerfing her into the ground over and over, and personally, like I said earlier, I'm fine with that. Finishing off our list, we have Pantheon. He's just way too feast for fam to play in this world that's supposed to tie the team together. There's just no real rationale that justifies picking him. As a kill lane support, you have to constantly try to go in and take trades. If you're not, your ADC is basically laning 1v2. But his engage is also super telegraphed, since he has to walk up and W whoever he's trying to target. Against a double ranged lane, you just have to take the poke as they cut you and disengage for whatever you're going for. Against tanker melee supports, they'll typically peel you off their carries, and they're usually too beefy for you to try to target them in fights. Now all that being said, there are going to be some lanes where you can come out on top, but even if you do get a lead with Pantheon, so what? What can you really do with him out of lane? His point and click stun can sometimes make some really good catches, but usually only when Flash is up. And flashing for a single kill every 5 minutes isn't exactly a game winning tech. He's also a very squishy champion, so you're not going to be useful as a frontline in fights. There's just no real reason to play him. When tank supports like Leona and Nautilus can have just as much kill threat in lane while also being useful later on, even when behind. And that about wraps things up for our 10 worst champions of patch 13.2. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure you sub so you never miss out on our meta guides, and you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember, let us know what champion that you think belongs to this list in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below, where you can discuss the league further, or just hang out and be part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.